So this part of the video was corrupt um, today and it didn't show up, so I am going to redo it. Just to recall what we did in class, we were diagnosing disease states and we're going to use calculus. The second and third part of this um, class is recorded and online already. So um, the problem that we were looking at was lab tests that report on a numerical scale. They never report back that the diagnosis is normal or abnormal. That's left to be uh, communicated by the physician. So the example that we used was a case of hypothyroidism. And um, just to remind you, it's a condition where the body doesn't have enough of the thyroid hormone. People feel very tired. Um, and there's indications that are flagged where a physician would then send the patient for this test. The test involves collecting um, information about T4, which is thyroxine, which is a thyroid hormone. And that pro is a proxy for hyperthyroidism. So the question is, if we measure T4, how do we determine when the lab test comes back that there's too much or too little T4? Um, ergo, that the patient is likely to have hypothyroidism. So the way to do that is to collect data. So you're using um, T4 as a proxy to diagnose whether the individual has hypothyroidism. Now, um, I went to a paper by Goldstein and Mushlin. Um, this is actually on the web uh, on a discussion of what, how to develop rock curves. So you can certainly go there and look. Um, if you look up ROC curves, you will find this website. It's like the second hit off of Google. A beautiful example. So what they show you in their data collection is um, they had measured um, T4 in a number of patients, 125 patients to be total. And from the data analysis, when you first look at it, our eyeball reaction was to look at this and say, well, it looks like a good cut point for T4 would be um, 5. Uh, anybody with a 5 or less of T4 would have um, would be diagnosed with having hypothyroidism, and anybody with five and uh, above five would be diagnosed as being disease free. And so um, that was the first thing that we all came up with in class. Um, the first section and the second section said, let's use five as the cut point. Um, just to let you know, these are this column represents everyone that had the disease uh, in the study, and this represents the column where everybody, the individuals who did not have the disease. So if five was a cut point. Um, how, do we die, how do we determine if this is a good cut point? Well, first, we have to make this binary. You either have the disease or not. So let's add up all these people on our test that were the individuals that were di diagnosed not having the disease. There are 14 people that did have the disease that were diagnosed as not having the disease if we use 5 as a cut point. And there was 92 people that didn't have the disease that were accurately defined as not having the disease or that were defined as um, not having disease. So they're ac that part's accurate. So there's two questions we have to ask. The first is, how likely is this test to detect the presence of hypothyroidism? So that means that you correctly identified those people who were sick. That's called sensitivity. You also want to know who uh, correctly diagnosed people who didn't have the disease. And you say, well, why do we care about that? Um, we really just care about people who have the disease. Well, that's not true. And I suggested in class that you change this to cancer. Um, do you want to tell people who don't have cancer that they do have cancer? That would be bad. So um, here we do care about d correctly, accurately detecting the absence of the disease as well. And that is called specificity. So how do we compute sensitivity and specificity? The first step is to actually use, these are the numbers we're going to need. We need the total number of patients that were tested, the total number that actually were diseased, the total number that were disease-free, and the total number we diagnosed properly. So with the disease was 32, without the disease was 93. I had an erroneous number here. I think I had 17 before, so it's actually 14 um, that's in this column. So I just took this uh, data set here. All the information's here. The total number of patients were 125. And then we calculate something called true positives, true negatives, false negatives, and false positives. This should be 14 here, not 17. The true positives are 18 out of the 32. That means the ones I got right that I said were positive for the disease were 18 out of the 32 that actually had the disease. The false negatives 
I falsely said they did not have the disease. So that's how you should think of false negatives. There are 14 people that actually did have the disease, but I falsely told them you don't have the disease. And so those are called false negatives. False positives are people who did have the disease um, that we said that, uh, that didn't have the disease that we said did have the disease. And true negatives were the total that we correctly um, identified as not having the disease. Um, here again, just to remind you, this person did not have the disease, but we told them that they did. So this, this is the person that didn't have cancer that we told them that they did have cancer. So that's a summary. True positives, false negatives, this should be 14. False positives was 1, true negatives was 92. How do you calculate sensitivity? You take the true positives, which was 18, and divide it by the total number that um, were actually sick, which was 32. So what's your rate of di correctly diagnosing the number of people, correctly diagnosing people who were sick? Well, you had a 56% chance of getting that right. That's what this number is. That's the likelihood the test comes back saying that they had the disease when they really did have the disease. What about specificity? Well, these are the people tr that are truly absent from the disease um, that I correctly identified being truly, uh, uh, this is the rate I correctly identified these individuals, and that's a 99%. So we discussed this in class. Um, we said, well, 99% is pretty good, but some people were a little bit uncomfortable with the 56%. So they didn't like the idea that a large number of people were, that had the disease were being told, go home, you're fine. Um, so that was not adequate um, when we discussed this in class. So um, what we decided to do is look at other numbers. On your homework, I had you actually calculate everything for T4 equals 9, not 7. You can do the same thing for different cut points. So I could do the same thing I just did for 5 for 7. And I could do the same thing I just did for 5 for 9. And so you'll now get a table of sensitivity and specificity. And looking at this table, you realize if I really want the best numbers, I want them balanced for both, not just be good at detecting people with the disease. I need to be good at detecting people without the disease as well. So you want some kind of balance in your diagnosis, an optimal point. Eyeballing, it looks like it's around here because here sensitivity is very high and specificity is really high. Here, sensitivity was low and inadequate while specificity was high. And here, sensitivity was really high, but now um, I'm misdiagnosing people who didn't have the disease. But kind of sort of eyeballing this is not a good way to go. Um, you want to get this right, and you want to get this as right as you possibly can because it's devastating to tell someone they didn't have the disease when they did and vice versa. So we use a, a method called receiver operating characteristic curves. And this is the graph of uh, 1 minus specificity versus sensitivity, which I think I've already covered in class, but just in case, I'll go over it. This is the step-by-step -step plot. Um, you uh, take the data that I just showed you and put it into Excel and graph 1 minus specific specificity um, against sensitivity. So these are your y values. I recopied these y values over here because I want the y values to be sitting next to the x values so I can just highlight the two and make my chart. So you can see my formula inside these screenshots. I always have the formula there so that you know what to type. Manually, if I'm doing this without SPSS, I actually have to type in 0, 0, and 1, 1 so that I get this corner point and this point. If you're at 0, 0, that means that um, 0 people were diagnosed and so you would get an automatically zero zero here and one one is also um, a, a fixed point so those two points will always be a data point and you can see the shape of the curve right here this is the ROC curve I showed you how to actually get that trend line the polynomial so you would right click these data points and select add trend line so that you can get a curve in there and um, you see that uh, I can select different things here when this box will come up if I se uh, select tr uh, trend line. I'm going to select polynomial. I initially put an order 6 polynomial. That means the highest degree of 6. Usually does the best. And you would actually 
Um, well, I did do that here and it looked bad. So then I reduced it down to two and it looked better. So you can see if it looks good or bad by just doing this. You, these two things are what you want to select to see how good a formula you have and what the formula is. See this R square tells you how good of a fit you have. And I got a 0.71 here. It just does an eyeball kind of thing where you can check and see if it's decent enough for you. And then over here you see the formula. We need this formula because we need some way to find the cut point. We need an X to solve for and this is where the formula comes from. So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to minimize the distance from the 0 0.01 to the curve. Um, so that's the distance formula. And that's the formula um, that I'm trying to, that's the formula for the curve. So now I have all the stuff that I need. I actually have a real life formula. It's not as pretty looking as things from the textbook, but I have something that I can work with to um, do some calculus with. And so now we move to the other video that describes how to find the optimal cut point.